Hi guys, we're back for another episode and we are talking about perspective today when it comes to our vestibular something. And this is much more than just say, you know, be happy or have a good mindset. I think going through a vestibular something really does shape you and the way that you look at your vestibular something well, that is in your control. So of course we all have awful days and bad mindset moments, but on the whole, our goal has been to look at our vestibular something and how it's reshaped our life for the positive, how it's maybe made us make career changes or get toxic energy out of our life or people or make life, big life changes. So I think all of us can talk about, you know, how it shaped our life, but we're really going to focus on not that the vestibular something happened to us, but maybe more the perspective that it's happening for us and what we can do with that perspective. So Laura, I know it's shaped your life in a big way. Uh, look, it's so funny because I've had so many of these conversations lately um, around sort of how positive I am. And for a lot of people, that can be quite confronting um, because I think society is, we're so programmed to be glass half empty opposed to glass half full. And mm -hmm. I was that person. Um, I've always been an optimist, but I think... I sort of, someone says to me, like, how can you be positive all the time? And I said, well, you know, nothing really phases me too much now because I feel as though my vestibular disorder shredded my ego. And I think it was the ego to please other people. Um, and it was, there were always the voices that said, I should be doing this or I should be doing that or, you know, have I done this? Whereas now I'm just like, vestibular changed my world for the better it definitely is not easy it wasn't easy but i feel as though we have a choice and i feel like we are all capable of so much amazing and i think as a society in whole we lose belief we lose belief in ourselves and i think even more so when you have a chronic condition you lose the belief that you're ever going to do anything because you let your condition define you and i think for each of us it would be so easy to sort of not get up every morning. It would be so easy to let the anxiety consume us. And don't get me wrong, there were parts of my journey and I was actually talking to someone last night where I sort of said, I think there was a year there where I was trying to work out what was going on. I, I, I can't remember. Like, I don't know how I got through because it's like I shut down. It's I let my condition define me. Now, like I know people say, how do you do that when your symptoms are so out of control? Yes, I know how to listen to my body now. And when I do have an attack, I need to rest. However, my ability to change my mindset that, you know, the big thing for me was this is an attack and this will pass. That was a huge one. I think before, and I don't know about you guys, but before I'd have an attack, I'd have an anxiety attack and then my attack would keep going. So it would yeah. feel like I was forever having one massive attack. But the moment I got my diagnosis, I was, it became working on the management of my condition opposed to not knowing. And I think there's a lot of people in their journeys that we spend so much time looking for a diagnosis that how we manage it and our mindset aren't even don't even come into play, which I have been yes. guilty of because you're, you're trying to mentally manage so many things. You're going through guilt, you're going through anxiety, you're going through all of it. Whereas now I make a really strong decision each day that you can learn something from everything. And sure, every single experience will not be fabulous. It won't be. Life isn't all daisies. I completely <laughs> get that despite what some people think. But I think through the hard times, we learn something, but we have to be open to learning that lesson. And I think there are so many moments of our lives that we miss because we're trying to skip ahead to the next thing. And I feel like with my vestibular condition, it's, and when I say stripping the ego, it's taught me to appreciate every single moment. And and like I said yesterday, actually, on a Migraine Australia call, um, we were celebrating the small wins. And I said, well, I still fist pump 
when I can go to the gym and I can do my three Ks on treadmill, whether it be running or walking, because once upon a time, I couldn't walk to the end of the driveway. I couldn't walk more than five meters without feeling like my whole world was moving around me. And sure, that still happens in bouts now, but I know how to manage that. And I think that's the key is it's so easy to let ourselves get consumed in how awful life can be. And I just think there are so many beautiful moments in life that we miss that we can't see because we've made a choice. And I know people watching will be like, no, you're at a different point of your journey. I understand that makes sense, but how do I get there? And, you know, I think my best advice is you have to be kind to yourself. That's the biggest thing because sometimes I am not all sunshines and daisies. Sometimes I want to sleep in for a little bit longer and I am feeling a bit sorry for myself. But the difference is, and what I recognize, and I am nicer to myself on those moments that might last half an hour, they might last an hour, they used to last days. They used to last months and then months turned into years, you know? So we've got to recognize each part of it. When I have a moment now, I let it, I let it roll. And I was even talking to someone the other day where we'd both woken up. It's like, it's like when you find your migraine people, <laughs> life changes because you find a tribe that get it. And I remember we both woke up at like two or three in the morning. And it's always really great for me because all of you guys are up so I can see exactly what's going on. <laughs> but in Australia, there's like hardly anyone up. But one of my other girlfriends was up and we were talking about it. And I said, you know, years ago, I would have woken up in the middle of the night and had a freak out because I couldn't go back to sleep. Whereas now I just roll with it. it yeah. I can't control everything. And I think, I think that's a big thing is I've, through the through my vestibular journey, the personal development I think that I have gone through, um, I would I would never want my life to be any different. And people so quite often say to me, "How can you say that that was one of the best things that ever happened?" And it is because I would not change this version of who I am. And I am not saying I'm perfect by any means. I'm continuing to learn and continuing to grow, but I would have never been open enough to grow and learn and soak up that information and be around positive people as much as I am now, unless I had my vestibular condition. Oh, that's dead on. I think I always say, I don't know. I'm, I'm more me now than I've ever been. I'm a more compassionate person. Yeah. Um, I think I'm kinder. I gratitude comes with small things and it comes with laundry and it comes in sitting in a messy house with my kids and it comes on enjoying a dinner. And of course there was a period of survival mode where I'm, I'm blackout too. I mean, I look at it, I'm not really sure. So it's not like it was all bubbles walking around of mm. just feeling happy along the way. But yeah, I think it's, like you said, it's finding, you have to find little moments. I think, you know, that person that's like, I don't know what to do. I'm all consumed with the symptoms. And for me, it was, it was trudging through that darkness, but having the mindset and the light of like, I'm still going to go forward and I'm looking out there and I'm not only just going to be happy when I'm there, I'm actually going to find somehow some piece of, no matter how small, if it's like a good TV show or a good podcast, or like just sitting with a friend, like just a small thing in the, in the now of however bad it is now. And then it, you kind of keep on going. So, I mean, it shaped my perspective wholeheartedly as well. So I, I totally hear you on that. All right, Ash, how about you? How are you feeling? <laughs> how has it shaped things for you? Um, okay, well, I'm pretty fatigued today. So I was super glad to get some notes in just when I flow, I can flow, but when I'm speaking, I really don't flow. So <laughs> no, but actually, <laughs> like sometimes just what people are saying is I think people are really appreciating having the realness of what it's like. Yeah. And the of it. So I think that you being, you know, just sharing that and being honest about that is it's very comforting. Yeah. I mean, I know a lot of people out there dealing the same thing with the brain fog and we still deal with it all the time. The difference is, you know, like Laura was saying, like we're all saying is, um, I mean, we've just taken it day by day and pushed forward. And even when we don't feel like it today, I don't feel like, (laughs) I feel like I could lay down and go to sleep. But I know that again, it's not a bad life. It's just like, not a bad, not even a bad day. It's just like, well, this is this and whatnot. So my notes here, I have, Um, I'm just going to read. So obviously vestibular life has taught me a lot. And um, 
I, I mean, I'm, I won't go into like all the things before vestibular life happened, but I had a lot of other things that just made me feel so victimized, like by my chronic illnesses. And so I just struggled a lot and I always felt like I had to keep up and keep up. And I put so much pressure, so many unhealthy things mm-hmm. that, um, it's like somewhere in here, I say it like vestibular life, like forced us to shut, to slow down. And like, I mean, our bodies are not meant for the lifestyle that a lot of people live and how I was living to keep up and people please and always saying yes to things. And just my priority, just my priorities were not there like at all. So, I mean, I really just, my life was completely stopped for the better really. So I said here, I, all the pressure I put on myself and so many other healthy things, I wasn't okay. And I wasn't healthy. I would fight all the time, fighting the illness in an unhealthy and unconstructive way only made my symptoms worse. The pattern I used to have surrounding the other chronic and invisible illness wasn't working. I knew I couldn't keep doing this. My mo- my body was just paying for it. And those around me paid for it. Um, my family, my friends, not knowing how, who I really was. And um, it was as if though the vestibular like this new life on top of everything else was there to teach me, like I said, to slow down and shift everything I was doing in my life. And really like my thoughts, that's the big thing. I had to shift like my mental patterns um, that had been around since before vestibular stuff. So it really forced me to stop and slow down. And I know Emmy, you're like we're talking about perspectives and I just, it's a huge part of shifting everybody's um, mental state so that they can slow down and really figure out how the best way is to cope with this. Um, otherwise it, it can easily keep going on with your life. Like, I mean, to take over your life. Like it's so easy to get sucked into our symptoms. So With that being said, like I wrote down a bunch of things, like I felt like where I'm at now, um, you know, my body might tell me uh, you don't feel good and you're not this and that and that, but like, I'm still me. That was something like I really wasn't in touch with for many, many, many years of my life. I just was identifying so much with chronic illness. And now I relate to it in that it's taught me a lot, not necessarily like I am it. I am more than vestibular stuff and more than my symptoms and the fatigue and everything. So um, that was like the first thing. I'm still me. Like I have to remind myself of that. Awareness is like huge. So really like Laura talking about being president, or well, you can be president. I'm sure you'd be great, but (laughs) (laughs) like being present. like is really a big deal because you know you're not you can't like I mean a lot of people are I wasn't I'll speak for myself I was not present and so I had to really work on being present and so I have here like I'm coping much better um I had to really strengthen my coping skills which helps not just vestibular wise but like it's just made me a better person all aspects of my life just coping with things that come up, traffic, um, you know, whatever it is, you know, um, I'm much more resilient because of these things and because of my symptoms and what I've been through. Um, I've learned to be calmer, Mm -hmm. um, more flexible, patient with myself, because I think it starts within us. Like I fully believe that I, I, I'm not going to say this right. Mother Teresa always said like something like go home and love your family. And it like starts in the home and within you, like me, my home is myself. Like I'm living in my body. So I have to treat myself better. And so that was like one thing, um, more patient. I already put tolerant and more tolerant of things. I know that sounds crazy because the intolerance that Mr. Wheeler brings and the dizziness. I know it's very difficult, but 
But I think um, that's because nothing is, to me, nothing yeah. is as bad as vestibular. Like, that's oh, what I, oh. nothing phases me because yeah. it's all fine. There's a solution to everything else. Yeah. It's no big deal. <laughs> right. Yeah, your threshold would... changes. Mm-hmm. Like, you're, um, I don't know how else to say that. Like, just, just everything shifts. Like, what you couldn't handle before, now you can handle better. And once you see, mm-hmm. like, oh, I'm handling this better because, wow, I've been going through all this stuff and, and it's changed me, you know? So, I mean, there's that for sure. Um, I'm honestly less judgmental of myself. I'm working on that. I have more self-compassion, like you guys were saying. Um, I know I can heal um, much better. Affirmations and mantras have been huge for me. Just knowing, like, I am here. I'm dizzy, but I'm here. I'm okay. I can get through this. All the, you pick your mantra. I tend to go with like mine that stuck was like I'm aligned so I'm still here I'm so aligned tomorrow's a new day whatever it is um uh the other last few things are like I'm still valuable so that was a big thing I always felt like I wasn't good enough for other people so I'm still like able to contribute to things in my life even though I don't feel good so um that was huge for me. Like I'm still valuable and I can, um, still do things like that was huge. So recognizing the little wins, like you were saying, those little things are the big things. Like for me, that's huge. Um, and honestly, I've met some of the most amazing, mindful, like holistic, just valuable, sympathetic empathetic like non-judgmental people you guys for sure that I never like I've I've had people like that in my life but like I have met so many people so that is like a huge positive from my journey like like I think it's looking at your internal and then that's like positive of the external is like that there are other amazing people out there and it's priceless. Like, it's just been completely, it's changed my life. Like, um, and then a couple other things I can bring purpose, which I think I already kind of said, like, I'm still valuable. I can still be purposeful. Um, like doing something with this, these disorders has really helped me a lot. Like, I'm sure you guys feel that too. Like just knowing, you know, that it's not just taking over you, you're actually like bringing purpose to it is super helpful. Um, and appreciating yoga, mindfulness and meditation for myself has been huge to slow down, like really being mindful and aware. And those were like the things I wrote down. I'm sure I have so many other things. And like, I love that we all have different things we're talking about. So yeah. those are my things. <laughs> you touched on really good things. And I think it just sort of brings things into focus. Like for a while, I felt like things went sideways and were completely out of focus and it was just all chaos. But I didn't realize within that chaos, I was like starting to see things clearer, people Mm -hmm. in my life, jobs, where I wanted to live, how I wanted to feel on a daily basis, what Mm -hmm. I wanted to do for my health, what actually matters, what actually brings on a daily basis like things are really muddled when you're in all consuming symptoms but I think it's also the place when you're in the storm where you start to see things a lot clearer because Mm -hmm. matter about being at every party and every event maybe it's you know the more special things and it's learning to not apologize anymore for what you're going through and learning the people that are going to be by your side so these are positives that come out of you you sort of get to you sort of get a cleaning out of like the Mm -hmm. stuff is just sitting Mm -hmm. around and you're like, I don't actually have room for any of this anymore. That's just baggage. Um, Set a new bar, I reckon. Like you set a bar for what you allow into your life. Mm -hmm. Like Ash said it before, it's like Mm -hmm. with friends and sort of people that you, like having all you guys. Well, if people aren't as great as you guys, I don't, I don't have room for (laughs) You know, like it sounds Yeah, yeah. But it's like by... By t- like connecting with so many people that are exactly the same, yeah. you do. I think we had real like as I said, we have really 
rubbish bars before where we just yeah. we let ourselves do all these yeah. things whereas now the bar is so much higher for what we allow into our lives and so much clearer like if you have a passion or something that your heart like is starting to like glom onto it like it becomes stronger like you know that that's something that like it brings purpose and i know all of us do various things in the vestibular world and whether it's outside of that that's awesome too i you know i would encourage having something that brings you happiness um, outside of the vestibular stuff too no matter how small or big um, it's just because it's more clear and it's more focused and you have more more drive than anyone can imagine when you are in the vestibular something like if you want something and you're in a vestibular storm like and if you have the mental perspective and mindset that you're going to make it happen then you've got more power than you could probably even give yourself credit for oh in that yeah moment. so yeah that uh hey last but not least yeah <laughs> So, um, I think for me, before I was diagnosed, I was living a, I was living a very unhealthy life. I was, I, I had a lot of unhealthy people around me. I had a lot of unhealthy relationships. I had a lot of unhealthy habits. Um, and Whenever things started with me and I was very, very confused, I went through this whole period of just being like, my life is never going to be normal. Like, I'm never, like, this is it. Like, I, I'm, I'm over. Like, I'm done. Yeah. And when I finally got, when I finally got my diagnosis, the day I was diagnosed, I was like, everything changes today, right now. And that was this, that was, it, it was actually like a moment that I was just like, okay, like things aren't going to be the same, but that's okay. Because I don't, I don't need to be that again. Like that, is, that is gone. I have to say goodbye to that. And now I have to look at, I have to look at this different. And it was hard. It was so heartbreaking and it was so difficult, but I knew that day I went, I came home I went straight to YouTube, the internet. I was like, I need to find, I need to find people. Like I need to, like these doctors aren't going to tell me anything. And like the doctor straight up told me the day I was diagnosed, he's like, I don't know how to treat this. And not a lot of people do. And, uh, good luck trying to find somebody and <laughs> we'll see what we can do for you, you know? And that's when I knew that I was just like, medication is not going to help you know, like I have to address myself. I have to look at myself and I have to address everything in my life right now. And it has to change. So there were relationships that I had already ended by the time, like by the time that I had my diagnosis, there were relationships that I had completely X out of my life and that will never come back into my life. And in doing that, I've brought, I've made so much room for so many other wonderful mm -hmm. people to come in. And even if I haven't met them face to face, I get choked up because it's changed my life for the better. Mm -hmm. Like I'm a better person today than I was at yeah. this time last year. Like, yeah. and this is yeah. right when, I was, like, this is almost like right at the time yeah. where things got started. And I still have my days where things are bad. I had a moment today. It's hot where I live. It's humid. I go outside. I came back in and I'm like, what? <laughs> this is crazy. Like, I can't, like, I can't survive in the outdoors. And I live in this beautiful place and I can't, like, do anything. But you know what? It's okay. And I have to, like, I, I, it reminds me to constantly address myself and constantly look at the better things that I have in my life and to be appreciative of everything, to be appreciative of my home, to be appreciative of the good relationships that I have in my life. Because I went for, I think, pretty much my entire life ha holding on to extremely toxic relationships, whether that was with family, friends, boyfriends, ex-husbands, whatever, you know, and it, it, it forced me to address that and it left room for so much more and having to stop, to stop work and to stop everything in my life that, 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 
broke my heart again. It was like heartbreak after heartbreak. But every time there was a heartbreak, it felt like that made room for something else to come in. Okay. And it's like, even in those bad moments, I, I, I have so much hope that it's just like, I know I may never be exactly the same again. Like I may have this to some degree for the rest of my life. And I'm okay with that because I needed to slow down. I needed to address so many things in my life and I need, I, I needed to address my health. Like, mm-hmm. Be, just because I was vegan doesn't mean that I was a healthy person. Right. You know, and just because, you know, I had friends or whatever that were, you know, high life, whatever you want to call it, social status, whatever, that, that doesn't mean that they were good people, you know? Right. And just because my life looked like I came from some intense privilege doesn't mean that it wasn't a living hell. And now I'm at a place where I appreciate all of the good so much more. And I'm able to recognize what's good and what's bad. And I'm able to say, okay, this is a healthy, this is a, this is going to be a healthy decision. And this is not going to be a healthy decision. And I know where to stop myself. And I know where, I know where the good is you know, like hard to explain. It's getting very, sorry, it's getting very dark in front of me right now. So that's, that's it. But, you know, I've, I've had to address myself. I've had to look at everything and address everything, every single thing I do in my life, even what I wash my hair with, like everything, like where, where I, where I go during the day, like how, like who I choose to communicate with. And there are some relationships that are gone forever and that's okay. You know, and that hurt and I've mourned that and that's okay. And maybe I've mourned part of the life that I had, that I had once before, but that's okay. Like, there's so much more good that's coming out of what I'm doing now than what I was doing before, like not being a healthy person and carrying on toxic relationships. And now it's just like, like so much, but it's so much like, it's hard to explain. And it's like, I understand like that people get caught up in these times where it's just like, they, they feel like there is no hope. But there, like, I don't know how to express it that there is, because I was that person that thought that I would be dead by now, and that this was, this was going to be the end, this was going to be the end of me, you know, but it's not, it wasn't, and I met the most incredible people, I connected with people that I would have never have connected with before, and I've involved myself in communities that I would have never have done any of this before. And this was stuff that I needed to do. This was stuff that like I needed to do to feel good inside and to help other people and to be able to help. There is, there is nothing like being able to help another person. And that doesn't mean giving, a per, giving people money or whatever, truly helping a person, you know, and telling them that, you're not alone and you're not alone in your struggle and you're going to get through this because if I can get through this without jumping over the edge and get through this. And I think online, like in the beginning, whenever I was looking at things online and I was like sort of researching what was out there, um, I found that there was like a lot of negativity in some spaces And there's this like competition of who's sicker and there's this competition of who's been sicker longer. And I think that we need to change that narrative and we need to say like, we're all, we're all in this to some degree and we're all suffering to some degree and to find a positive place. If you find that you're like stuck in a place where it's just like, it's just like, 
oh, I don't know how to say it. Like maybe you guys can express it better. No, but if, like, you're, if you're stuck in that, like yeah. you have to, you have Bible. to create a bubble, and you you actually have to physically leave those situations. I think all of us have talked about being in support groups that were no longer serving us, communicating with people that were no longer serving us. Like this is your opportunity that you get to say goodbye where you need to say goodbye and you get to put up boundaries where you want to put up boundaries so that yeah. you can create the path that has the light and has the hope. Like you have Absolutely. to create it. You you have to create it. It's not coming for you. None no. of this, none of this positivity came for us. None of this perspective shift came for us. It was dark and it was chaos. And then there's an awakening, but there is always a breaking, whether, no matter how, you know, whether it's a full, you know, breakdown or it's just many, many moments of, you know, breakdowns and then getting back up. And for me, I would say it was more like this along yeah. the whole healing journey than it was just like a constant, you know, there was like, I got to a great place and then I'd have a regression and then I'd keep on climbing and going back up. Yeah. So, yeah, no, you're in the you still there. Everything you say, like, so I love listening to you because you are such a force. Like, and I don't even think you realize just how much a force you are. Like, you talk about like life before, but like, I, I mean, I don't, I know when I say it to myself, I think this happened to me for a reason, but like, you are going to change the world. Like, and I know I say that often, but just yeah. with your, like, it, like, you are like no excuses. Like, I always have to channel you when I'm having like a moment of, <laughs> what would Edna do? Because you're just, the no nonsense and like your belief in other people, I don't know how to explain it. Like, my great New Zealand, for those that don't know. I know. Was, was Edna talking to Briar and she yeah. hadn't spoken to anyone before. And that is, like, that's incredible. And that's that why, is, like. Yeah, that that's girl said, she was online saying that nobody cared. And I was like, I care. Yeah. I care what you have to say. Talk to me about it. You yeah, know, like yeah, I'll listen. Yeah. Because yeah. there, you know, before all of this happened to me and I had this chaotic family of just a cycle and cycle of chaos. And, you know, I felt like I didn't have anybody to talk to. Like, I didn't feel like I had any, like, like I felt like I didn't have any true friend that I could go to with like serious heavy stuff. Yeah. And that's why I'm like, come to me like with the heavy stuff because yeah. Yeah. I don't want people to feel like, I don't want anybody yeah. to ever feel the way that I felt. No, you know? right. that's, so, that's exactly it. Yeah. You have, yeah. The, you have a lot of the same stuff. You and I connect, yeah, like very yeah, much. A lot of the same. Yeah, and I think that this is like no matter how dark it is right now, like yeah. out of the whole we are talking, I just sometimes I envision things, and all I envisioned was like this messy desk with like tons of paper and scissors in there and a stapler, and it's just a freaking mess. And literally, the stapler stuff happens, and you're like, you swipe it clean, just, it's all gone, you don't matter, mm -hmm. and then you rebuild how you want it. And it yeah. feels ugly because you're missing things you used to have and it's all really bad, but you just, you have to start from that fresh clean slate and it doesn't mean it's going to feel good. It doesn't mean tomorrow is going to be, feel any better. Yeah. Like if you can look at this, I think all of us, what we're saying in this positive outlook is like, look at this as your opportunity. You have just yeah. been handed an opportunity to change your life, to yes. focus on your health, because if it wasn't this health thing, maybe it was going to be another health thing. So like now you get to focus on your health and really create vibrant health, regardless how slow it takes. It's just, this is your starting point. This is, yeah. this is, this is a starting point. And to me, I believe it was a, ble it was a blessing in disguise. Like I needed, I needed to sit down and address myself and say, get it together like get your yeah get yourself <laughs> together like yeah. you cannot live like this and i'm still in that process i have so many ups and downs like i'm living like right now i'm in charleston south carolina i am very homesick for being back in miami but i'm still so appreciative to be where i am and to have the support that i have and to be in this beautiful place, in this house, with so much love, with a person who supports me yeah. beyond what I could have ever imagined. Like, yeah. 
ever in my life. And I'm, I feel so lucky for all of the, you know, to have yeah, all of yeah. this, even though I still like, there's still things that I miss and there's still things that I want, but don't count me out because I'm coming back. It may not be exactly the same, but I will be back to oh, some, yeah. you will um, be. to some, yeah. to some degree. We're it's all evolving. Yeah, we are yeah. evolving and changing. And you don't, you don't want to go. I mean, yes, I know that there are things that people miss pre vestibular life. In my situation, coming full circle, I deeply believe you can get back to whatever you want to get back to. And I can't put any yeah. timeline on that or any what it's going to look like, but you make it work in your world no matter how slow. But yeah, just go, just keep going. Yeah. 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 And if you have nobody to talk to, you can call me. <laughs> yeah. You know. Hello, mm -hmm. I'll link, I have linked in all our videos, all our Instagram stuff below. So don't hesitate to reach mm -hmm. out to anybody, whoever you resonate with. Like, we are here. That's why we do this. Yeah. 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 And we have Balance Awareness Week coming. <laughs> yeah. Let us know what's going on. Which is, okay. So I think we're all doing fundraisers, individual fundraisers. So... Em, are you doing a fundraiser? I'm no. not doing anything, but I'll support however okay. I can, you guys. <laughs> sure, sure. You're, you're around. So, yeah. <laughs> um, always around. I mean, it doesn't matter. I hear you. We, yeah. are, we are trying to get a, um, a Vita Ambassador thing together. Um, it's work in yeah. progress. So, watch this space. Um, but there are so, so many people are doing so many different activities, which is really cool. I guess for those that don't really know a lot about it, yeah. um, it's just such a really cool way to raise the awareness around our vestibular conditions, not just within our community, but beyond our community. So they're yeah. seeing um, Ash and I have been putting together some of the challenge stuff for the ambassadors, like really simple games, really simple yeah. activities. Mm -hmm. Like um, I think we spoke about like, you know, do Jenga, but sort of, you know, someone was talking about like spin on an office desk and go round and round and round <laughs> and then go, go for a walk or do something like that because yeah, yeah. That, it's like living in the life. It's a really good one for those that haven't sort of gotten involved to get involved. And if you haven't enrolled for the virtual um, summit either, it's going to be wicked. Like I always can we link that below. below. Can we, can we put that yeah. link below? Oh, okay. So we'll put everything, all the details will be below and links. So you guys can jump into it. And, and yeah, yeah. And uh, there are patient panels every day. So you don't just hear from doctors. You're hearing perspectives from different, from different vestibular patients too. Awesome. Um, Similar to what we what we discuss here, yeah. Um, yeah so it is yeah. going to be it's going to be such a fun week. Yeah. And that'll be cool. a tattoo of a flamingo. I'm sorry. I know. Yeah. Okay. So that that was the thing. So I said if I hit my goal, yeah, which you I, know, I saw this morning. You're yeah. less than a hundred bucks to go. I know. You're gonna hit it. You know you're gonna hit it. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I will. And so um, I will go to Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and I'm going to get a tattoo of a flamingo. I don't know oh, where. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where I'm going to put it. I'm going to put it somewhere. Like, and I've already, it. Yeah. <laughs> like, I've already researched this because like, you know, the heavy metals and all of that. Yeah. Like I didn't, like, so we're, we're doing, like, I have somebody who, like, works with, like, non-toxic yeah. ink, like, doesn't have, like, That's the cool. headache. I That's have a few good. tattoos now, and I was like, do I need to get these dissolved because of, like, the heavy metals? Like, yeah. I need it, like, what do I need to We're just, they're not very big, so, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm gonna, so cool. I'm gonna do that, and I'm gonna do it live on Instagram so people can watch and they can talk yes. to me. Yes. <laughs> well, we were talking about doing a live Q and A for those watching too um, during Balance Awareness Week. We need to set those details, um, but I guess we were talking about doing something similar to this, but allowing people to ask us questions. Um, yes. So it's exciting. 
If people yeah, want to yeah. reach out or become involved, should we just guide them to the Vita website or is there a direct location? There is. There's the Balance Awareness website. What I'll do is I'll send through the link so people can see it below if they're watching. Um, okay. There is a lot. And keep an eye on the Vita Facebook, which has got a lot of that up, like the upcoming information, um, especially. And, I mean, a lot of people will be seeing all the um, Vita ambassadors sharing everything as yeah. well. Um, Laura. Are you speaking or are you just, you're going to be our host for the conference? Yeah, so I am oh, moderating yeah. the patient panel every day, which I'm so uh -huh. excited about because okay. I've got to of work and it'll be between one o'clock to four o'clock every morning <laughs> for me. I'm so excited. Oh my God. You're the guys were like, you know that that's really early. Like you don't have to commit to every, I was like, no, I'm so in, I'm so excited <laughs> um, to speak to everyone because yeah. every day, as I said, the topics they cover every day are really cool. And then yeah. what we've done is, um, and Alicia Dizzy Cook has done so much work on this. Yeah. Um, so I hope everyone sort of gives her love hard through everything she's yeah. like she's pregnant at the moment so yeah. that's huge um yeah. but basically what they've done is with the doctors each day they found patients or like you know vestibular warriors that match some of the key issues and right. what we're doing is we have a handful of questions um that if you've got questions you submit through the um through the portal but there'll be mm -hmm. questions that we ask as well and I just I'm so excited because I think you know we so often talk about I think no matter where you are on your journey Vita does really it it finds somewhere for us because yeah. you know sometimes at the beginning I wasn't able to listen to doctors because I needed to talk to a normal person like I needed yeah. to talk to someone who got it whereas what they're doing is you've got the ability to watch the doctors talk and then you've got the ability to hear from the patients who have lived through it. Yeah, and really I like. think that is, um, that's going to be really cool. So I am hosting, well, I'm moderating that each day. I'm off. excited because I'm speaking on day three about vestibular rehabilitation therapy. I'm nervous because my brain doesn't work half the time, but I'm excited you're going to be with me. And yeah. I think it's important well, we talk about all these things. So it's, yeah. it's going to be cool. Uh, I think I'm, I'm talking so, about like the I'm mind and body experience, you know. how it affects you. I think, I think that's what you had me signed up for. Like the mind and body experience yeah. and what it really feels like. Yeah. yeah. So, Psychological yeah. impact. Yeah. That would be yeah. cool. Um, yeah. yeah it's so many good things. Yeah. So I, love it. I love it. I love it. I just love it. Because so awesome. You, well, you log in like to any social media platform and it's just, it's a vestibular everything or it's yeah. my <laughs> And my time in Australia, we've done this, we've paired up the weeks as well. So like during that week, we'll be pushing out the information um, in Australia and sharing it from like the Australian perspective too. And I know Migraine New Zealand are doing something similar because um, Brian is now an ambassador as well. Yeah. So yeah. like, it's so cool just to get people talking about it. And I know there are yeah. so many people and I know we've talked like without going too much into it, mm -hmm. there are so many people that would have vestibular migraine or vestibular something and I got no idea. Like, you know, when yeah. I got diagnosed, I had no, I was like, migraine. How is this right. migraine? You know what I mean? So it's like, the more we openly talk about it, and I think the more we openly recognize that it's okay not to be okay, the power of that within our community, not just to ourselves, but to others is huge. Like, you know, I, I always say, even a person that, I, like, that receives that message and goes and changes their life in some way like there's no price on that that's yeah and I feel like so much like what Edda said is there is you can't even describe what it feels like yeah. because mm -hmm. you never envisioned that your life would be like that and yeah. I never envisioned my life would be where I am right now and I'm just I have no amount of words to how grateful I am for each of you and just for the entire journey of it all. Like just the gratitude just yeah. sort of like fills me up and overwhelms me, you know? <laughs> yes. Yes. I think that's a good note. I think that we end in like a place of gratitude and this is just an opportunity right now, wherever you are in your journey to start now taking steps forward and creating the perspective that you want. And then, yeah, again, we'll have all the details for balance week below and we'll be back soon with more. So keep telling oh. us what topics you guys want. Yeah, go. One other thing, 
so I recently, I went to, I finally went to the neurologist after waiting eight months and mm. he is actually, he's on, he is associated with Veda and he is associated with that doctor in Delaware. I don't know if you guys know who I'm talking about. Anyways, my, I, I had a conversation with him. He's Lebanese, like my husband is Lebanese. So it's a similar community and he got us actually involved in a lot of other um, charity stuff because what ha because of what happened in Beirut. Yeah. Anyways, um, I told him, I said, you know, look, I get messages from people all the time that really have no idea like where to go or what to do. They've had all these tests. They've been to so many doctors. I said, are you still doing virtual appointments? And he told me that, yes, he will do virtual appointments. He will weigh in um, on it. He will help to weigh in on anybody who feels like they could benefit from a virtual or telehealth appointment. Awesome. Granted that you have had at least a MRI or a CT scan. So That's we can so cool. add his information. That's good, yeah. Um, he will do that for the time, you know, for the time being. And um, he's very good. He also... He has vestibular migraine himself, wow. so like when we have hurricanes and stuff, sometimes he'll have to like lay down for like five or six hours. So he comes from a place of really like understanding, uh, um, you know, where we like where we're coming from. So, that's so rare for us yeah. to actually understand, understand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> some level. <laughs> and he's actually like he's gonna come to our local support groups like we could have him on here if you guys want to do a question and answer like he'd be yeah. more to do that like mm -hmm. he's very um like he he likes to be involved there's not a lot of people that live here so he you know let's yeah. get him involved for balance awareness week I mean, so the, here's the thing, because of what has happened in, in Beirut, there is a lot that he has to deal with right now. I think getting family members, like, yeah. out of the region to, to here, and then there's um, also with COVID, he is very, very backed up with, like, in-person patients. He can take virtual patients, like, anytime, but, like, in person, like, people who are emergency or urgent he's very backed up with that so at the moment like whenever we had our events for the you know our fundraisers for Beirut he didn't actually show up to any of it he just he donated a lot of money but he was able to get us on the news so yeah. like cool. he could get us on the news like I mean he, there's a lot like that we can do with this guy and because he is part of the same community as my husband like he's willing to Help. There's much power well, we've got together. Like, and that's a big one for yeah. us. We're stronger together, always. Yes. For people that don't talk about what's going on, it's, we are stronger together. Yeah. Um, it's, there's no other way to say that. We are, like, we just got to bind together and create absolute yeah. magic. We're going to change this world. Yeah. Okay. It's happening. So I'll post you his, de his details. And if anybody feels like they need a virtual appointment and I have the phone number to his direct assistant and they can call and say that, um, you know, his patient at a Sunberg has said that he will do a virtual appointment for them. USA <laughs> only, unfortunately, like it, he can't do yeah. like outside of the United States because of insurance and things like right. that. So. Yeah. Awesome. It's a gift. Yes. Okay. <laughs> well, until next time. Right. All okay. right. Thanks, guys. <laughs>